Okay, it gets worse. Graham Stephan, Meet Kellen, Andre Jack, and Jeremy of Financial Education had this channel called Millennial Money. Apparently, the channel is gone. They are running scared. Let's see what this guy has to say about the deletion of Persons millennial promoting money. promoting FTX over the past year or so are in panic mode. So Andre Jick, uh, Jeremy Financial Education, Graham Stephan, and Meet Kevin. These guys all created a channel about a year, to, year ago, and they have since deleted it from the face of the universe. They do not want anyone to know the amount of of association with FTX they have had. It is absolutely incredible. Now, before we go over the actual channel they deleted, let's go over just what has happened with FTX basically over the last 24, 48 hours. So one of the initial rumors that happened late Friday night was that Sam bankman fried the creator of FTX, apparently he was on the run. He was on one of his private jets and he was taking off, flying all over the world, trying to go to some country that didn't have an extradition treaty with the US so he could escape with all the money and just completely get away. And this was a big rumor that was actually uh, floating on Twitter and a lot of actual news organizations, real organizations, picked up on this story and said it was real news. So there was this Argentina, a lot of Spanish papers for whatever were picking up on this. And it turns out this was all fake. This was actually started by someone uh, on Twitter. I'll put his handle up. He actually created this rumor. A lot of people believed this story to be real and that he was on the run. It turns out it's not true. So we have now a confirmation from the Bahamian police. Uh, Sam Bankman Free is under supervision in Bahamas. Apparently, they think he may flee to Dubai, but he is currently still in the Bahamas. The police in the Bahamas are watching him. They have not arrested him at this point, uh, but they are currently watching him. So there's no way he's going to be able to get out of the country uh, unless he can pay off the cops or something. I don't, I don't know how, they're, how the cops are down there, but he's still in the Bahamas. So the story that he fled the country on one of his private jets, uh, that's not true at all. Now, another story that came out, the CEO of Alameda Research, which, which was the sister company of FTX, was run by a lady by the name of Caroline Ellison. Now, Caroline Ellison apparently got that job because she used to knock boots uh, with Sam Bankman Freed. Apparently, they knew each other. They knocked boots for a while. And apparently, I don't know if I can actually say this word on YouTube, but apparently the uh, FTX crew, the people at the top, like to have a bunch of, let's say, snuggle parties. <laughs> snuggle parties? <laughs> uh, there were a lot of snuggle parties that took place among the FTX crew. So this crew was just a bunch of crazy kids who were running one of the biggest uh, crypto exchanges in the world. And apparently this lady, Ellison, was big into drug use as well. I'll put up this tweet. This is from her official Twitter account. So it's crazy that this, you know, massive drug user uh, was running one of the largest companies along with Sam Bankman Free. Now, after all of that, apparently uh, the FTX... Now... This just goes to show you that the young kids, this girl who was apparently on drugs, they were running the second largest crypto exchange. This just goes ahead and shows you typically what a scam cryptocurrency can be because these were not high level. These were not astute these were not deeply technological people and this was the world's second largest crypto exchange it was run by these children the x exchange was hacked now if you actually believe uh this exchange was hacked i have a great bridge i would love to sell you in brooklyn my email is below Send me uh, an email and I'll, I'll happily sell it to you for a great price. Uh, but there's, there's no way that this company, this FTX, was hacked, right? This was clearly someone on the inside. I don't know if it was Sam Bigman fried this crazy lady, or maybe some developer that worked on the FTX platform. I don't know who it was. But clearly someone with backdoor access got into the FTX accounts and drained about $600 million, which was what was left in the accounts after the massive, you know, everyone draining their money from FTX. Now, I think this is the final nail in the coffin if you potentially still had money F in FTX. Uh, you're not going to see it ever again at this point. The, the money's gone. It was hacked away, what was left of it. And any money that is still there is going to go to pay back uh, people or companies that FTX had borrowed money from. 
the actual individual investors, I'm sorry, like they're, they're, at this point, you're not going to see any of your money back. But from there, from all of the terrible things that have happened with FTX, how this story continues to snowball and get worse and worse and worse, these big grifters, I like to call them, like I said, uh, the Evil Justice League or the Crime Syndicate of America, Graham Stephan, Andre Jick, uh, Meet Kevin, Jeremy Financial Education, they created a channel about a year ago, actually a year and a half ago, early 2021, called Millennial Money. Now this channel, they had all four of them sitting around a table and they would just talk all about their stock picks and what they think is going on in the financial world. It was fairly boring in my opinion, but that's what they did. It worked pretty well. They got to about 170. I think they were almost at 200K subscribers at one point. And if you had been watching that channel, you would know that their biggest sponsor, basically from when they started the channel, was FTX. And these were hour-long programs when they would have the FTX logo on the screen the entire time, right? They made so much money from FTX. And earlier this year, I think around July of this year, they actually... Now, how much money did they make? Because Graham Stephan and Andre Jack have put up vi apology videos, but they're not talking about how much money they made, which I feel is quite substantial. Actually stopped making videos for this channel. They left all the videos up there. Everything was still there. They said they were going to come back and make videos again at some point, but because the stock market had cooled down, they decided to focus on their main channels and not focus on this channel. Now, since the FTX scandal has broken, and since they plastered the FTX logo on every video on that channel, and everything that's going on, they have now scrapped that channel. If you go there, you can still go to the channel, it still exists, they no longer have their logo, they no longer have their icon, and if you try and go to the video section, there's not a single video there. You can see they still... Alright, now this is something that I recently went through. Apparently, millennial money is on someone's um, Gmail account. Here, here's the thing. Now, there is a way, if it works, and I have a feeling that it didn't work because I was trying to delete one of my mail channels and you know what you had to do was put the channel name in and it would not work. So what I did is I went ahead and just deleted the whole Gmail account and that's how that got rid of that. I have a feeling that this Gmail account is either on Graham Stephens or Andre Jack and they just can't get rid of it because if they had could have gotten rid of it, they would have gotten rid of it. So I think they ran into the same problem that I ran into. So literally the account, it was one of the mail channels uh, since I didn't w need that Gmail account, I was able to just get rid of it and that got rid of the channel. So I think that is what happened because, oh man, it's it's interesting. It is interesting that um, they're trying to sanitize the crime scene and it ain't going to work. It's not going to work. Still have 170,000 subscribers, but they don't have a single video on the platform anymore. Now, what's amazing to me is if you actually go to the channel, they are still accepting memberships on this now dead channel. This channel that doesn't have any content, they've wiped everything from existence, right? You can still pay them $4.99 a month or $14.99 a month to join a membership for their channel. That is amazing to me that they are that greedy, that they're still trying to get money from people, even though they have wiped the channel out. Now, there is an option in YouTube where you can actually delete your entire channel. They just they just went into the channel, they deleted all the videos, but the channel still exists, right? You can actually delete your channel from YouTube, and if you delete your channel from YouTube, the memberships go away. Those people who have memberships, they will never have to pay for you again. They want to be refunded for that month if you cancel your channel, and they did not do that. They just wiped all the videos and kept the memberships. That is insane. That is the insane amount of greed that these people have, that they're going to continue... Once again, I feel that if they could have deleted the channel, because uh, like YouTube sometimes gets a little glitchy. And like I said, I recently tried to delete a channel and the destructions that YouTube gives you did not work. So I feel that that's what they, they ran into. Except memberships for this now dead channel. Now, I don't know if they deleted the channel because, you know, they were ashamed of their connection with FTX 
or if possibly they were worried about lawsuits. Because inevitably, there will be many, many lawsuits that are filed because of all the money that people lost with FTX. Now, you could argue that maybe or maybe not these people could be sued. Obviously, they did not, you know, commit any fraud within FTX, but they promoted the program, right? Now, as someone who's, who's talked about cryptocurrency for a long time, I talked about cryptocurrency in 2017, there was this big scam called BitConnect way back, uh, went under in early 2018. and a BitConnect! <laughs> oh man, that was crazy. And th this once again, if you've noticed that cryptocurrency is synonymous with scam and people losing money and people being conned and people having their money taken, this is a trend. A lot of the people who actually promoted it, who actually weren't in the program, they've just promoted it, they have actually had lawsuits filed against them as well. So just because you are not in the actual company that committed the fraud, if you are promoting it, there is the potential that you could be sued. Doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will lose the lawsuit or you'll have to pay a bunch of money, but there is definitely the potential that these guys could be sued. So I think potentially maybe they destroyed the channel uh, to you know get rid of any evidence to potentially fuel lawsuits against them. But I would love to hear your opinion about everything going on with FTX. What do you think about all these crazy rumors about how the company was having snuggle parties and all that stuff? And what do you think about millennial money just completely destroying their channel to get rid of any evidence that they were ever involved with FTX? Okay. Um, I talked about this, but I went to Graham's channel and this is probably one of the shortest videos that he has on his channel. And he didn't even bother to make a stupid thumbnail with one of his dumb faces on it. He just went ahead, threw it up real quick. But they are literally roasting him in the comments. I've never seen this type of negativity directed toward Graham even when he called me a scammer people didn't really care Graham Stephan heavily promoted FTX he was a paid sponsor up until the very end being easily fooled may be a fine defense but also it's an argument to avoid taking his advice transparent question Graham Stephan how much money did FTX pay you given recent events I think your describers deserve a longer video on FTX just remember that Graham Stephanley, Stephan heavily promoted FTX. He was a paid sponsor and remained so until the very end. 1.4 thousand, oh, 1,400 likes. Thankfully, all funds at FTX and US are not impacted. Famous last words. More accountability should be taken at this point, Graham. Thanks for this amazing script you wrote to try to keep your audience. It was definitely not motivated by money. <laughs> Graham Stephan, I was wrong and I'm sorry. Also, Graham Stephan, but keeping all your money they gave me. More of the story. Don't trust YouTubers with your money. Always do due diligence. This guy promoted the hell out of FTX to us all. He made his money off you at least. Now he's seeing what's the next sponsor he can promote, sell us on. I lost a bunch of Eurythium on FTX, not not like many others. I literally, the only reason I signed up with FTX was because of Graham and his advocacy for him. Thanks for making this video anyway. Whoa, that's a burn. That's a burn. I remember finding this channel in 2020 during the outbreak of COVID and found it very informative. I grew attached to the channels, thought the amount of information in comparison to the promotions were quite high. After a while, it became like most other finance gurus where it was one third info, one third clickbait titles and one third promotion. So I had a break from the channel and now I come back to this. It's sad to see. It seems to me that no matter which channel you find, they are bound to be some party, which is goal to capitalize on you. Graham, if you're really sorry, make videos showing how these sponsorships work. Tell us exactly what they told you and describe the things you didn't see in retrospect. That's the value I want to see you bring back to the space. Also, more real estate videos you used to add value at the space with these videos. Hmm. I had originally made a comment defending you as a, someone that trusted you, even though I personally didn't use FTX. Luckily, 
The community corrected me and I forced myself to look at the scandal more. This was just depressing. Now, all these people who trusted you and fell other YouTubers help with their financial journey. Well, this truly damaged the community trusting you and maybe you don't care. But I know if you want to keep watching, uh, if you want to keep watching your videos, it'll leave my comments. So hopefully I don't deceive others as well. Good luck. And hopefully the community recovers their lost assets. Uh, I am sorry, Graham. This is not enough. You are the problem. They bought you. We appreciate the money even after enough research. Lots of people from your audience went after your advice. You know that I'm not personally involved in FTX, but I feel the people who did, maybe all of them sponsored ones should clean out how much you were come clean, how much they were paid by them and go there. Just pay a huge chunk of your dear FTX sponsorship to a good charity and make a video. It would be good for your soul and karma. I mean, this, 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 this is it. There is not one positive uh, comment. They are literally roasting Graham. It, it's like uh, the word due diligence comes to mind, Graham. The more high profile get, the less naive you can afford to be. If you just look at their corporate structure, you might think twice about accepting. I mean, they are really digging into Graham. And also, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on a second. Hey, no more buying court. No more wasting time trying to do real estate deals on your own. If you want to flip a house. Hi, my name is Andrew Jack. Hope you're well. Come to finance and stay full of finance. This story has the perfect trifecta of all the things we're not supposed to talk about. Money, politics, and religion. Because crypto. Yep, they're going after him too. I mean, <clears throat> this is a lot. But let's see, did he do an apology? Uh, crypto, proving up. He did not do. I know there was somewhere a policy, something was talking about. He apologized, but yeah, they're they're going in on these guys, and rightfully so, because what I thought was very interesting was the um, number, the the deletion of the channel. That that's epic. Let's go ahead and check out. This is how things started for me. All right. Uh-huh. He is not really addressed his role in it. He still has the dumb faces on his channel. He's not talked about it. Um, but I'm, I'm noticing the trend. Um, his channel isn't getting the views that it used to. Like, you know, you go here. I mean, he used to get way more, 
way more views, way more, a lot more. I mean, so I don't know if this was before um, the crypto implosion, but um, his views are down. His views are clearly down. Let's go ahead and look at the other party. Well, folks, I am uh, preparing for a recession. And nope, <laughs> he, he, he ain't even talking about it. He's not even talking about it. He just has a bunch of dumb faces on it. He was another person that was part of millennial money. But once again, you will see a trend. His views are, are way 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 down but right now in this current market i mean it's kind of hard to really be talking about stocks but yeah man i mean they are really really going after <laughs> Hey guys, it's Sasha. FTX, the second biggest crypto exchange in the world, has just gone bankrupt. A few minutes ago, FTX has announced that the FTX group has filed Chapter 11 proceedings in the United States. Just yesterday, a bunch of twallops on YouTube who got paid by FTX to shield their Ponzi scheme came out and told their followers that FTX US is a completely separate company. Absolutely nothing to do with FTX.com. I presume they all got given the same exact exact screwed by FTX because it was magically odd how every single creator came out and said the same exact shit. But it turns out that FTX US and FTX.com are exactly the same platform. They have identical websites, they have exactly the same owners, they have exactly the same leadership team, they have exactly the same investors, and it turns out miraculously that FTX US and FTX.com are only separate on paper because it is a legal requirement to operate their business in the United States. But underneath that fakery, it is exactly the same thing. Something none of these YouTubers could have possibly known before today's announcement because it was completely impossible to tell. But look, in this very note, it says FTX.com, FTX US, and Alameda Research are all joined at the hip and are part of the same group, and they are all going bankrupt along with the money of their customers. Sam Bankman Fried has resigned and is no longer the company CEO, and every other senior person in FTX has also resigned. So, anyone invested in FTX, I wish you good luck with getting your money out. There is a new CEO called John J. Ray III who will run the administration of the company from here on out. And as is often the case with these kind of things, the administrators are probably going to suck as much money as possible from the carcass of this dog shit company in administration fees before any of the remains, if there are any remains, are shared out to the debtors, which is exactly what everyone who had their money in crypto and FTX has now become. So basically, everybody who had money in FTX just got absolutely fucked. Because the one thing that is pretty much certain in the world of crypto is that every centralized exchange eventually turns out to be a fraud and collapses like clockwork. And just yesterday, the same fucking influencers who were getting all of their followers to sign up with FTX over the last year went on their YouTube channels to tell their followers that FTX US is completely separate from FTX.com and is doing just fine. Don't worry too much. Despite all of them having international audiences, 
and the same link to FTX that they had in the description lets you sign up with either entity depending on where you were based in the world. Meet Kevin went on Yahoo Finance to talk about FTX without once mentioning that he spent months promoting this platform to his audience, shilling that piece of garbage. Seriously, what the fuck? How short are people's memories? Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, Andrew Jick went to make a video about the FTX crash pretending he had nothing to do with it. He immediately got swarmed with comments asking why he didn't mention that he in fact took a load of money from FTX and his reply to every comment was I've never promoted FTX on my channel, I'd have to legally disclose that I had to do with all my other sponsors. Which is very convenient because Andre was being sponsored by FTX on his other channel called Millennial Money. Here is Andre talking in a video that has the fucking FTX sponsor logo right above his head. But sure, pretend that you are innocent, have nothing to do with it, because fucking other people on a different channel that gets 100,000 views. Ooh, so this is why Andre did not do a video. He never sponsored FTX on his channel, but he was part and parcel of Millennial Money, which was sponsored by FTX. So, yes, he is blameworthy. He is culpable. And I found it very odd. They was like, I never sponsored FTX on my channel as an escape hatch. Hilarious per video is absolutely fine. No problem with that whatsoever. You won't be able to see these comments though if you go and have a look because Andre has gone and deleted all of them between yesterday and today. There were hundreds of them on there yesterday when I looked but today I only managed to find this one that he missed. Even more funny that video by Andre had affiliate links to another fucking crypto exchange called BlockFi and that exchange has just halted withdrawals as well because they're in trouble. Way to fucking go. Maybe Andre can make another video about BlockFi and have that video sponsored by FTX to complete the circle of fucker Andre. Graham Stefan did apologize in his video which I thought was a very good thing to do. I was wrong and I'm sorry. But he then proceeded to explain that of course FTX US is completely separate from the international FTX and FTX US is absolutely Absolutely fine, it's safe, it's good, it's all clean. Like I said, thankfully, all funds at FTX US are not impacted, and I pray it stays that way. Which kind of made the apology bit completely meaningless, especially now that FTX US has gone fucking bankrupt a day later. And the thing is, all of these content creators and every celebrity who was shitting FTX will come out and say, I had no idea, how could I possibly have known that FTX is dodgy? Well, I almost buy that kind of explanation from somebody like Tom Brady, who a guy who plays American football for a living. But here, we have financial influencers who apparently know a thing or two about investing because they teach it to people, including shit like doing due diligence. So maybe you would expect these fuckwits to actually use the grey stuff in between their ears when a sponsor comes along offering eye-watering amounts of money, way more than any normal sponsor would pay, to promote on your channel. The sponsor is a crypto exchange that sells worthless crypto tokens to your followers. The exchange is three years old, run by a guy with three years work experience in a junior trading role and by some fucking magic this exchange has billions of dollars in the management and is throwing ridiculous absurd amounts of money at you that is too good to be true you see unlike these low lives i've actually worked in banks and financial services for most of my career and if a random 20 something old dude with no experience who's the ceo of a made-up company registered in the fucking bahamas with no public accounts or any information at all if that guy turns up splashing ridiculous amounts of money, asking if I'll promote their business of selling worthless dog shit tokens, aka Ponzi schemes, to people, I personally would get alarm bells ringing in my head, like I have done every single time that happened. I don't even think you have to have ever worked in the bank to have alarm bells ringing in your head. But if you are a greedy rat, it does not matter. You just take the money, no questions asked, and you go and sell this shit on your channel to all of your followers. It does not matter that you are selling a fucking scam. You are getting paid. It doesn't matter that your followers have a high risk of losing all of their money. Who cares? They're just random pictures on your YouTube channel that earn you thousands of dollars every day. 
today because it's obviously incredibly difficult for these YouTubers to understand this. So let me give you a quick guide on how to not be an absolute fucking tool. One, stop promoting Ponzi schemes on your channel. If someone comes along and asks you to promote the latest dog token, JPEGs of monkeys wearing funny hats, or any other fucking garbage, then the correct course of action is to tell that person to fuck off, not to take their money. Number two, Stop promoting piece of shit crypto exchanges. It really isn't very hard. These crypto exchanges make their money from encouraging people to buy crypto tokens. And the only reason people buy crypto tokens is because they want to get rich quick by promoting these shitty platforms. You are taking advantage of people who are financially desperate, who might be looking for a magic way out. But instead of telling your viewers that there isn't a magic way out, you tell them that they should go and buy some fucking safe Moon or Flocky Emu or whatever other shit that is popular that week and they go right ahead, they trust you and they take their money that they don't have to the crypto exchange and buy that shit. And the two possible outcomes are the value of their investment goes to zero as the shit token immediately becomes worthless or the platform that they used to buy this piece of shit disappears overnight like what just happened and happened dozens of times before. I am guessing all of these twallops are now going to start promoting Binance Net. Next, the number one crypto exchange in the world who also make their money from people trying to get rich quick of buying fucking crypto tokens. Binance also have their own Ponzi scheme called the BNB token, exactly the same sort of shit as the FTT token that is now worth nothing, just in a different wrapper. While FTX is registered in the Bahamas, nobody even knows where the fuck Binance is registered. They have random private companies dotted around different tax havens like Malta and the Cayman Islands, but there is no way to act actually know where the company is based, and even lawyers filing lawsuits against Binance don't know where to file them. And the result is that Binance is not regulated by anyone. There is no oversight whatsoever, there is no auditing. They can do whatever they fuck they want with your money, and they don't have to account to anyone. If that doesn't sound weird to you, I don't know what you're doing telling people about finance on YouTube. CZ, the founder, is apparently the 30th richest person in the world after running this piece of shit exchange for five years. Because selling made up tokens that have no actual worth at all for hundreds of dollars each can make you very rich very quickly. What a fucking surprise! It's a fucking Ponzi scheme! And this is the biggest crypto company in the world. This is what this whole industry is about. It is about su- Now, interestingly enough, he just said something, and this is something that I keep bringing up. They make up these tokens in their basement. There is nothing that backs them. It is just speculation and hope. And the second largest crypto exchange was essentially a Ponzi scheme. And more than likely, the largest crypto exchange is doing the same stuff. Fucking money out of people trying to get rich by selling them tickets to their dream, by telling them there's a magic solution to all of their problems. And then laughing as all of those people lose all of their money and you end up with $33 billion out of fucking nowhere. If you are a YouTuber and somebody comes to you with an obvious fraud and asks you to market it for them in exchange for money, it is no fucking good pretending you didn't know it was a fraud, especially when the money was way too good to be true as a primary indicator. Just because you aren't an employee of the scam company does not mean that you are innocent. You are the reason all of those people have gone over to these Ponzi schemes and lost all of their money. You and your fucking greed. I look forward to watching all of the videos from these fuckers saying that I didn't know. I only provided marketing services for them. I'm a good guy really, trust me. Nobody could possibly have predicted this. I can only hope that karma comes and kicks you in the teeth really hard because the same thing just keeps on happening over and over and over. Or maybe it won't be karma. Maybe it's going to be the SEC or the DOJ or somebody Probably not, though, because those guys seem to be even more incapable than these YouTubers. But we can hope. Uh, to his point, this keeps happening over and over 
and over and over in the crypto space. Yet, mark my words, once the dust settles, people will be still piling their money into cryptocurrency. I guarantee it. 